All right, welcome everyone to another interview Thursday today. Hope you guys are having a great evening, and we have an awesome guest with us today from Florida, Tony Burris. Um, he is a very active chess player and streamer. Um, so welcome, Tony. Thank you for joining us today. How you doing? Yeah, thanks for having me, Matt. Um, it's great to be here. Awesome. Cool. Um, so thank you very much for last minute getting on uh, with us because definitely I, I was having some trouble this week, actually. So uh, hopping on is a big, big, big help. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about you, about uh, what got you into chess and actually even with uh, not chess stuff. What what else do you do? <laughs> yeah, so I got into chess. Um, well, when I was little, I actually moved from uh, Florida to L.A. Mm -hmm. and I lived out there for seven years. And um, during my time out there um, in elementary school, I saw this board game. And of course it turned out to be chess. Um, the funny thing was my sister, she actually had this magnetic uh, chess board and um, I found it one day. And then I saw that same game at my school. And I was like, wait a second, isn't that the same game? <laughs> and so then I just uh, asked around and every, uh, um, it was always at lunchtime when the kids would play mm -hmm. and um, we would all get our uh, like little rollout, you know, USCF chess mats and uh, set up a match. Um, and ever since I've been hooked. All right. Awesome. And uh, but during chess, I, when you go to school, what did you do in school? Uh, yeah. So right now I'm a full time student as well. So um, it's you know, struggle to balance the chess life and the school life. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm majoring in uh, interdisciplinary entrepreneurship. Okay. Uh, so I'm working on a social media app right now. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope to get that into the app store um, pretty soon. All right. Awesome. Are you a, kind of like a programmer as well? I'm not really a programmer. Okay. I really need to learn because I am developing an app. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I want to learn for sure. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, did you just start college this past year? How old are you? Uh, yeah, I did just uh, start college uh, last October. I'm a freshman um, and I just turned 20 um, a few weeks ago, actually. Oh, sweet. Uh, <laughs> guy in Bielderman <laughs> in the chat saying uh, Python is a good language to start with. All right, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Python is great. Um, I've heard it's a really easy language to learn mm -hmm. and it's very flexible. You can learn like AI or data science, things right. like that. Yep. And uh, obviously you're in the modern day with us having to go online from the pandemic. How are you handling online learning? Uh, yeah, it's definitely a, a new change for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I am kind of used to online learning though because I was homeschooled before uh, going to the university where I go. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm used to online learning. Um, but going into college, I was expecting to live there right away on campus. Um, but due to the pandemic, I'm just uh, learning remotely right now. Right. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a change, but it's not that big of, of a change either. Mm -hmm. Do you know what your uh, future goals may be in uh, your entrepreneurship or the entrepreneur major, I should say? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so more than just creating the app, that's what I meant. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah. So first I just want to, uh, get the app out there, hopefully make it a success. Uh -huh. And, um, from there, um, I'd like to sell my app, um, and then start more companies. All right. Awesome. Well, best of luck to you. And I know that, um, with your work <laughs> ethic, especially here in chess, you're going to do great. So thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's go ahead and get started today. Um, so right. we have a couple games from Tony, and the first one, let me switch on over to the next layout. Bam. All right. Uh, what is this first game that you're going to show us today? Yeah, so this first game, we got to get in the time machine. All right. Go back. It feels like forever <laughs> now. Um, all the way back in 2016. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, which... I don't know, anything pre-2020 feels like forever. Ago. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is 2016, mm -hmm. and uh, this was the New Year's uh, Gulf Coast New Year's Open Tournament. Okay. And um, so at this point in the tournament, it's round five, so the last round. And um, I had two draws and two wins. Okay. And what so, section were you in? 
I was in the under 2100 section. Gotcha. And um, a couple of the guys were at three points as well. Mm -hmm. And then there was one guy who was at three and a half. Um, so I really needed to win this game in order to have a chance at first. Gotcha. So um, my opponent wasn't, you know, a pushover there. He was an expert. Um, so, you know, expert players are always good, of course. All right. So I have the white pieces in this game. Mm -hmm. Um, so I opened up with my favorite move, e4. All right. <laughs> and my opponent played the, well, I'm going to call it the controversial French defense. <laughs> <laughs> some people love it, some people hate it. Mm -hmm. um, but my opponent apparently loved it because he chose a very interesting line. So, of course, all of this is well known. Mm -hmm. um, the winner nothing right, new boy. to see here. <laughs> yep, very sharp. Um, at least that's what you think. It's going to be a sharp game. Mm -hmm. But then he plays this move, queen to d7. And this is, like, when you look at the position, it just looks so awkward. Um, this is a move that you would see, like, a grandmaster make, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Or maybe a beginner player. <laughs> um, nothing in between. <laughs> <laughs> because it's such an awkward move. Right. Um, in fact, I still, even to this day, I wonder what the idea is of queen d7. Um, it's... I think whenever I went back and looked at it more, mm -hmm. um, it's like a very high class waiting move. Okay. Um, so basically, black just is waiting for the moment. Um, the queen is better. Well, black is saying my queen is better placed on d7 than it is on d8. Right. Which could be true, but it does block the bishop on c8, blocks the knight on b8. However, the bishop on c8 isn't going to go to d7, most likely. Mm -hmm. um, there is the Fort Knox variation, which I can show that real quick. Yeah, absolutely. Um, e4, e6, d4, knight c3, d, uh, d takes e4, knight takes e4, and then bishop d7. And then the bishop comes out to c6, and we get stuff like this. Right. Um, so in that variation, that makes sense, but the bishop can't do that, so... Um, yeah, queen d7 is a high class waiting move. <laughs> Got it. So and, I didn't know what's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, obviously, when your opponent plays this move, you think to yourself, "This is still in preparation." Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely thought it was preparation, mm -hmm. and um, unfortunately, you know, whenever you see moves like this, you have to spend a lot of time unless you prepared. Um, I did not prepare for this move. It's a very rare move. Mm -hmm. Um. So already my opponent has a very good strategy in making me think um, after only three moves. Wow. Which is kind of unfortunate for me. <laughs> so so what is your plan of, or what's your approach from here? Do you take more time trying to figure out how to understand this move or you try to play a quicker move to show that you're not afraid? <laughs> so um, honestly, I thought, I thought Queen D7 was kind of just like a silly move. Um, I didn't really understand the purpose of it. Okay. Back then, my chess understanding was fairly good, but it wasn't as good as it is now, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so I just thought, eh, that's maybe it's some random variation, but I'm just going to play like normal. Okay. So I just played quickly and played the regular e, uh, A3 here. Mm -hmm. So attacking the bishop, and then the bishop drops all the way back. And then here I paused again. Because bishop to f8 is a common idea, but I didn't really know this back then. Um, I did. I don't really play the French defense, mm -hmm. so all of these, you know, very high class waiting moves um, are kind of unusual to me. Right. And uh, Annika in the chat, obviously those who are just now tuning in, um, Tony is showing one of his tournament games here. Uh, your question on the opening: It is the French winner with a very very early quote high class waiting move queen d7 <laughs> yes yeah just to do a little recap for yeah. anakit um got the french defense bishop b4 and queen d7 mm -hmm. now i played a3 and bishop to f8 all right so now we just get uh well i'm just my strategy is to go for the normal plans here which uh -huh. include f4 and knight f3 get the big pawn center yeah and my opponent plays b6 so this is uh more typical 
Um, he just wants to go bishop to a6, trade off the bad bishop. Mm -hmm. Knight f3, bishop a6, take, take, and then queen to d3. So questioning the knight. So I thought this was very strange how my opponent played. He said, I'm going to give you, you know, a million tempi, and you can do whatever you want with that. <laughs> so basically, he's saying, I'm going to use you to play against yourself because he wants me to overpress the position. Right. Um, I've already played some committal moves with e5, f4, and you could argue d4 is committal as well. Right. So I could run the risk of becoming overextended. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I'm just developing naturally and I have a better position. So he drops back knight to b8. I just castle. He goes knight e7. Mm -hmm. And now knight to g5. Um, I'm not really sure about this move nowadays, but this was kind of my style back then. Um, knight to g5, my point was to provoke a weakness here. Um, so in the game, he played g6. But I don't know if knight g5 is great these days because um, I think he could just go like h6, basically. Mm -hmm. I think one of my points, perhaps, though, was to go all the way in and just capture the bishop and destroy this uh, king side, basically. Or stop the king from castling. Right. Um, so that was an idea. Mm -hmm. Although you always have to be careful here. Uh, like an idea like rook takes h7, takes here, and then g6. Yeah. <laughs> and your queen is kind of stranded out in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. um, even an idea like f5, you know, you have to try something like this to get the queen out eventually, or h4, h5. Right. But it could be scary for you. Uh, so we went g6, though. Um, which is not a great move because he weakens uh, f6. Mm -hmm. So I want bishop to d2, normal development. Um, I think bishop d2 is in an accuracy, though. I like bishop to e3 better now okay? because uh, I'm stopping c5. Ah, gotcha. Uh, bishop d2, he just gets c5, and that's what you want in the French, of course. Um, how interesting um, is it to you to look at an older game like this and see ideas that you normally or that you didn't see in the past <laughs> um it's very interesting um yeah i had a lot of fun looking for some games for today mm -hmm. um it's uh, it's cool to see like your improvement and the work that you put in um and it's kind of you know embarrassing at times to look at your old stuff and be <laughs> like oh my goodness how could i have played that mm -hmm. um but that's you know where learning comes in and that's how you get to the next level of course Right. You seem very, very level-headed too, which is like awesome for someone who wants to improve. Like, I think that's an excellent, uh, an excellent, uh, what's the word I was trying to find here? Personality to have. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, that's what I like a lot about chess. It teaches you about improvement. Mm -hmm. Um, like generally speaking, it just teaches you how to, um, study and improve, all right, so I went in 82, so I didn't like my knight on c3. His job was down there, mm -hmm. so I need to reroute my knight. It's not really clear, though, where I'm going to go with my knight. Like, if he doesn't take my pawn on d4, then um, the knight kind of doesn't have a great future. Right. Um, I could consider g4, knight g3, and then f5, um, but black might play h5 and try to open things up on h5. Okay. So he went knight c6, and then I went b4. So, um, actually, here I surprised myself again because I didn't even really expect this plan with b4. Um, <laughs> okay. looking at this position now, <laughs> um, but yeah, b4. So, trying to force the issue, I want him to take on d4, and that's what he does. Mm -hmm. And then rook to c8, queen to d3. So, to be honest, I don't really get anything from this opening. Um, he goes knight f5, which is a pretty solid move. He does get double pawns, but my pawn on c2 is really weak. So that's a good compensation for him. Um, then I go c3, and my bishop on d2 is also a horrible piece. Right. Um, I need to try to like reroute it to uh, h4, probably. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Going queen c6, rook f3, uh, overprotecting the c pawn using Aaron Nimzovich's idea. Um, queen c4 takes, takes, 
So we get into this end game now, and here I'm slightly worse. So I chose this game because it's a good illustration of how you can outplay your opponent in slightly worse positions okay. if you have better a better understanding of the end game. Okay. So this is where the game really begins. Gotcha. Um, so bishop h6, rook f1. So I'm still very uh, slightly worse here. Now, would King you say D7. that you're stronger in the end game? Um, um, or... just depends on the position and who I'm playing, I guess. Okay. <laughs> um, so being an all yeah, player. generally, yeah, generally I've always played um, pretty well in that end game. I think mm -hmm. uh, when I was first be uh, like starting out, uh, when I was like 11, I always used to trade pretty much all the pieces. And then just you know get into the end game and outplay my opponents. So just used to it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got it. Um, but of course, it's not that simple. Uh, uh, you know, those were just beginner players. Um, but I do think I have the natural feel for the end game. Okay. Um, the opening is a little bit more challenging sometimes. Um, in the middle game, of course, is uh, the most challenging stage. I think. Okay. So rook to e4. So he has an interesting little uh, constellation here with these pawns, f7, e6, d5, f5, and the rook is like the cherry on top. <laughs> it's like um, an ice cream cone or something like that. <laughs> Can I make that red just the cherry? <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. Um, so one concept, <laughs> one concept that I was thinking in my head was his rook on e4 is really well placed. However, it's uh, really far away from everybody else. So what if I can find a way to uh, really kind of artificially trap that guy? Okay. So I went rook to f3. So that's going to play a factor later on. Um, then he goes h4, with, which is a committal move. Um, because you can imagine a scenario where we get into an endgame. And then I play... Um, and then I could play like king. Actually, I guess I would just go like uh, g3 and just trade the pawns. But my king could literally like run up the h file and then go after his uh, kingside pawns. Okay, so overextension. <laughs> yeah. Because I was going to say the h4 pawn is kind of weak. It is a little bit weak, but it's not that bad. The main point is my king can uh, potentially run up the h file. Got it. So rook to d4. So I'm offering the trade. Um, he should probably take that. He doesn't need to take it. Um, it's not checkers. You don't have to take the piece, which a lot of players forget to. Um, you don't have to take pieces. I didn't know that in checkers, actually. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that explains a lot. I used to, I used to play like um, you don't have to like double jump and all that stuff, but you actually do uh, oh. the official rules. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I gotta go back to the game though. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, checkers might be harder than chess for that reason, even though people say checkers is easier than chess. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, rook c8, so attacking the c pawn, bishop to d2, and then rook to c4. So now his rooks are communicating with each other. Mm -hmm. So then I took. So here's a question to the chat What's the most uh, natural move here, rook takes c4 or d takes c4? Uh, what move would you guys play? Anakin, we know really you're there. Decided... Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> this really uh, decided the game. Mm -hmm. And on YouTube, guys, go ahead and pause your videos as well. Exactly. And we have Rook takes C4 in the chat by Guy Bielderman saying is the most natural. I agree with that. Feels yeah, exactly. Natural. Rook takes C4 is the most natural move. Mm -hmm. But my opponent, he tried to be a little bit fancy here, I guess, and he went d takes c4, um, which actually the engine says the position is still equal. Uh -huh. But I feel like White has good practical chances now. Yeah, it feels um, like he, which is really trapped. surprising, <laughs> because yeah, as you highlighted, the rook is trapped. Um, the thing is, the king can come all the way to d5, but once he comes to d5, that's it. The king can actually try to come to a4 as well. But I just go a4 myself, mm -hmm. um, and his king can't do anything. So really, the king doesn't have a clear mission. Um, so black's pieces are 
frozen right now. Mm -hmm. My bishop on d2 is not great. My rook on f3 is not really great. But they're slightly better than black's pieces. And that's really important. Okay. So a4, a6. So a little uh, waiting game right now. King c6. And then g3. And now h3. So h3 is very committal as well. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times... If we trade like the rooks off, especially, I can go g4, sacrifice a pawn temporarily, mm -hmm. then go king g3, take on g4, take on h3. Um, question in chat: Why not rook to h3? Rook to h3? Uh, because f4? bishop takes uh, f4, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the move you'd like to play, but it just doesn't work right now. Mm -hmm. Good question, though. <laughs> oh yeah, f4. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you definitely can't drop f4 because then everything falls and the rook is a beast all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, g3, h3, king of 2 So we get these trades. King e2, oh, bishop g7. <laughs> yeah, the rook, it's just so sad, unfortunately. <laughs> it's completely paralyzed. Um, oh, my goodness. He wants to go... Well, he needs to get his bishop to d6, mm -hmm. um, and then he has a winning position. Um, but the bishop, it just takes forever to do that. So rook d1, king f3. So now I have a winning position because his rook is trapped. Bishop d8. So he almost gets his bishop to b6, but as soon as he is about to do that, I just go rook a6. So it's very unfortunate. Right. Um, he's just one tempo behind, which oftentimes that's what decides a chess game. Mm-hmm. So seven. probably the main turning point was that question to the chat about playing the natural move or playing the quote fancy move, trying to go against principles. So right, technically again it was equal. So mm -hmm. like a lot of people, if they you know look at the engine, they're like, well that wasn't necessarily a blunder. Right. But there are some moves that you want to play, mm -hmm. and always remember too the engine can literally see like a hundred moves ahead. <laughs> Whereas we can only see, um, well, a lot of times you only need to look like four moves ahead. Right. Um, so you always have to remember that. And there are certain moves that you want to play and certain moves that you want to avoid. So that was one of those moves. He should have taken with the rook, of course. Positions that are more practical to play. Exactly. Okay. And now it's I'm just a pawn up, and it's uh, pretty easy to win this. Mm -hmm. Have to watch out for a couple of tricks like bishop f2. Mm -hmm. um, so, what to do here with white? Last question of the game. Hmm. White's to move and secure the win. What you guys got in chat? <laughs> White's move and win. Wow. Think about prophylaxis. Oh, got someone in chat saying thinking. <laughs> All right. <laughs> One try is B5, but let's see what uh, our other viewer has to say here. He's thinking. All right. Yeah. Probably cut this part out for video or for YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Give us something, Mark. Let's go. <laughs> All right. I'll go ahead and do one personally as well. I'm thinking you're saying prophylactic, huh? Um, yeah, prophylactic. So what is Black's threat, and how do you stop that threat? Bishop to h4 is kind of annoying. Uh, um, it is kind of annoying, but even but if Black Bishop wins e1. that pawn, you have, oh. the, you have the b pawn. So Bishop so h4 Bishop isn't really a threat. Yeah, Bishop d2, excellent. Okay. Yep. So Bishop d2, and yeah, of course, Black's threat was Bishop to e1. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, with precise calculation, uh, White actually probably can just go b5 anyway. Right. Um, if we turn on the engine, see if that move works. Um, <laughs> b5. Um, yeah, the engine doesn't really like it. Um, white is winning still, but it's going to be harder. I'll go and swing so yeah, bishop d2 part. just stops all the counterplay. And so yeah, that was gg. <laughs> all right. And it was just a... Uh... It was pretty clean from there, and the fact that you handle yourself so well from an opening novelty, I guess, in the moment you played the game, that's that's impressive. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and this was a yeah. this was a key game for you to win. 
Yeah, so what happened was um, I got four points, but unfortunately there was someone who got four and a half. Oh. Um, so he got first, um, but then I got second. Okay. Still um, a very good so, uh, performance for you, undefeated. Yeah, it was a nice tourney overall. Awesome. Well, um, that was five years ago, guys, my... so imagine where he's at now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have my good moments and bad moments. Uh, you know, at Lee Chess, you can play like a bunch of blitz games like mm -hmm. I did last night. Um, I actually reached my all-time high of 2548. Oh, wow. Um, but then Congrats. I dipped all the way to 2400. <laughs> <laughs> Happens, right? You have all these yeah. ups and downs. Yeah, because there comes a point when you win a bunch of games. Um, and I mean, for me personally, I think a lot of players can relate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you just miss over the board chess. Yeah. So it's not as fun, like, even seeing, like, a nice rating like that. It's like, nah, I, I prefer that over the board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I agree. But, yeah, <laughs> currently back on the grind, back at 2450. And uh, definitely going to throw this in the history books here from Guy Bielderman. The B6 and Queen D7 systems were played a lot in the 60s and 70s, like Korchnoi and Petrosian. Cool. Didn't know that. Yes, that's right. All right. Thanks for the history lesson there, guy. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it makes sense that those guys played it too. Mm -hmm. um, especially Petrosian. His uh, style was all about maneuvering. Maneuvering and full control. <laughs> exactly. Giving nothing. But Karpa was sim similar too. Surprise yeah. I wonder if Karpa will play something like Karpa. that. Well, he played Kara Khan, so. I wouldn't doubt it. Um, I'm sure he did play a couple of Frenches in his day as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like an old fossil exactly uh guy.